I'm gonna show you a proof of the change in times. What the hell is daylight saving time? Is that is that in the Bible? Get out! Bring it out! Bring it out! Nah. Somebody help me out. When did God say go back an hour or forward an hour? What? Somebody help me out. I need to understand why. Who told God? Who said? You know what, God? I'm gonna. I know your time is like this. But I feel like the time should go back an hour just because, you know, I feel like it's right. You know, I, I've been putting your people in slavery and you ain't been nothing. So let me just take a time about an hour back. I can change that, right? Okay. Whoa. You know what? I'll change another time. I know you said Sabbath day is on the seventh day. But Sunday sounds a lot better because, you know, we get to worship the sun. And, you know, Satan is involved. Is evolved, and, you know, you don't mind because you let Satan give us power. So us as so-called white people, we're going we're gonna to change it to Sunday. That's what your enemy did. That's why Chick fil A is closed on Sunday because the so called white man says, hey, Sabbath is not on Saturday no more. It's on Sunday. Bring it out. This is why we go to church on Sunday because in slavery, where they wore out the saints, they said, you know, no, 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 Sabbath, Saturday? No, 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 no. I'm your God now. I'm. Sorry, sorry. The white man said, I'm your God now. This is what he said. And he said, you're going to work for me on the day that I tell you to. That's when we got this. And because of that, now we hold Sunday dear to our hearts where we go and tell the pastor we love him, we love God, and we do not keep the Sabbath at all. We break the Sabbath. And even on the Sunday that you're calling the Sabbath, do you keep it holy? You do it just like every other day. We go to Golden Corral right afterwards. I hop right afterwards. We don't stop and buy and sell it. Am I wrong, Reggie? Am I wrong, sis? We break the Sabbath. We still break the Sabbath on Sunday. And, Bruh, and even on Sunday, we break it on Sunday. We still break it. <laughs> I'm going to tell y'all. Read that again. <laughs> and he shall speak great words against the Most High. That's great words against the Most High. I'm changing your holy day. And guess what? Who got the whole wide world doing it now? Who got us doing it, sis? Who got us doing it? Hey, it is what it is. What we're trying to get y'all to realize is your enemies made your enemies has made your yokes harder on you, but you already hope you already made it harder yourself. Since did you buy that Gatorade? Was you supposed to buy on the Sabbath? Since why'd you do it? Since you don't see your brothers out here, you don't think we're your brothers? You don't think we're gonna help you out? This is the thing, sis. If you want to keep God's laws. There's no problem with brothers helping you or brothers helping you. But if you try to go, if you want to do your own thing, what happens is this. You buy Gatorade on the Sabbath. You break God's laws. That sin is the reason we went into slavery, sis. Break it out. That one very sin. Can I show you? Let me show you. Me and my intent again. Bring it out. I want to show the sister because I don't, I don't mind helping you out, sis. You might, you knew, but you might not understand. But I want you to go home today and I want you to really listen to this and think about it. You know what? It might not be worth losing my life. Over some uh, water. Did you know God killed a man for picking up sticks on the Sabbath? Bring it out! The man was going to pick up sticks to cook. You're not supposed to cook on the Sabbath. Did you know God killed a man for that? Did you know in the New Testament, God killed somebody for lying? Yes. How? He took their spirit away from them. But because they lied, he killed them. Do you know what the wages of sin is if you sin? Bring it out! What do you get? What is your payment? What does God give you when you sin? Bring it out! Give me that Romans 6 and 23. I, I want you to understand. I got you, brother. I want you to understand, sis. We're not out here kind of, we're not out here to give you, like, options. Honestly, whatever you want to do, it's up to you. My job is to make sure you know better so that way now when Christ returns, you're either worthy of life or worthy of death. Lord, read that. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Read it out. For the wages of sin, the payment for sin, sis, is what? Is death. Ooh. That's a, that's a tough hill to swallow. But we got to. You know why he gave us that word? Why he told us that? Because he said, I want you to respect me. I want you to live. I want you to stop supplying the enemy with the money to oppress you. That's what we're trying to get you to understand. Go back to Nehemiah. We want you to understand. Buying and selling on the Sabbath is not allowed if you believe in God. If you love God. If you're a child of God. That's the rule. Y'all understand that, brothers? All right, y'all got any questions before I keep going? Yeah, I got one though, right? Because that's a sin, right? Uh-huh. No, that, that's not a sin. That's the that's consequences. That's, that's, yeah, that's you go. Much, right? Yep. Okay, but um, but still though, don't they? Because it's not right. Don't oh, you mean by the other nations and something yeah. gonna happen to them? Ain't something gonna happen to them? Oh. Bring it up! Bring it up! 
Ow! Good revelations. Yeah. He asked a good question. He asked, what's going to happen to the other nations for the slavery that was put upon us? Because I know he can judge us one by one, but he really judges by nation. Right, right. He, first thing first, they don't have the laws. So now they're getting judged. They, us, the laws are brought to us. So we get judged for disobeying our father. They get judged for whether or not they went against the order that was given to them on how far they were supposed to go, what they were supposed to do. That's it. Read. Revelation chapter 13, verse 9. This is for the other nations, the so-called white man, the so-called Asian man, the so-called Arab man. Let's read about their judgment for bringing us over here in America by force. Right. If any man have an ear, let him hear. You know what? That's interesting. Why would Christ say, if you have an ear, let him hear? Because everybody can hear, but everybody, nobody, not, a lot of people don't listen. It takes a real skill to listen. That means to understand what you heard and to realize where you need to apply it in your life. That's called wisdom. A lot of people have ears, but they don't know how to hear. Read. He that leadeth into captivity uh, shall go into captivity. That sounds, that sounds very, very odd. It says, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. How do we get here? By who? By who? Who, who, who? who took us? Who brought us into slavery? Esau, the white man. It wasn't just them. I can prove it to you. And there you go. Give me Joel. I want the proof. Oh, who led us here? So we understand who's going to be involved. Who's going to go into slavery? Then how you know Africans got their own nation, right? Because I know I can have sex with an African person and I can't have a full-blown African marriage. Let me say you something, bro. The scripture says, if you, first things first, you can't be with, you can't, there's no such thing as interracial yeah, marriage. Yeah, so you shouldn't deal with them at all. Yeah, well, that's right. First, I, I they, they own nation, though. Exactly. We're our own nation as well. You know, I can have, listen, if me or my wife have a baby. There you go. We can have a son. It's going to be full-blown. And, you, and your nation continues to thrive and build, right? That's right. Keep on. Read that. I wonder who was involved in the slavery or the transatlantic slave trade, the trans-Saharan slave trade. Read. Joel chapter 3, verse 1. Oh, no. For behold, in those days and in that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. That's the northern kingdom and southern kingdom. The northern kingdom is the so-called Hispanics and Native American Indians. If you look on the sign, that's all of them. Uh, that's all what you call Latinos or Indians. That's Jerusalem, or so-called Israel, in the northern kingdom. There was a split after King Solomon. Jeroboam and Rehoboam, y'all heard about that? There was a split. This is the, in the New Testament, who was the northern kingdom? That's the ones that Paul called the Gentiles. That's why he said Jew or Greek. He didn't say Jew or Chinese. He didn't say Jew or Arab. He said Jew or Greek, because northern kingdom was worship other guys as Greeks. Right. Get out. Get out. Huh? Who is the Gentiles? It, so, it is the northern kingdom. It's the, matter of fact, I'm going to give you even one that's heavier. The Gentiles is what the Bible dictionary? Get the Bible dictionary, somebody. The Gentile, Gentile, the definition of it means usually, usually a heathen nation. It says usually because majority of the time it was heathens, but at some point there was the Israelites that were considered Gentiles. Not physically, mentally. I'm gonna give you proof. What did you call what was your nationality before you knew you was Israel? What'd you call yourself? That's a Gentile. Because is it an Israelite? Your mindset is in the mindset of somebody else, another nation, something else. Read that, Gentiles. This is the Zondering Compact Bible Dictionary. Gentiles, usually it means a non-Israelite people. It usually means a non-Israelite people. It's because usually it was an Israelite. But at some point in time, Israelites decided, I'm not going to obey God. And you know what happened? They got taken into slavery. And you know what happened when they got taken into slavery? They got their names changed. When they got their names changed, they got their nationality changed. When they got their nationality changed, they called themselves Gentiles. Don't you, call show, don't you call yourself Gentiles in the Christian church? When they say that now? Uh. Let's go back to what's going to happen to those other nations for making us call ourselves Gentiles. Go ahead. Joel chapter 3 verse 2. Uh -huh. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. You still with me, right, sis? We talking about those nations that brought us slavery. Why? What's going to happen to them for doing that to us, right? Read. And will plead with them there for my people. When he says plead, that means war. That means war. I'm just going to make it plain and simple. 
Y'all be like, World War Three is coming. That's how he's gonna play with the nation. And look at you one better. If you ain't on point, if you ain't keeping the commandments when he comes, you're gonna be the one dying with the nations as well because you're still in a Gentile mind state. Right. Like Israel like keeps God's laws. Remember he said, what would you do? What, what do I require of thee if you're gonna serve me? Love me, keep my commandments. If you're not doing that, then you're not serving him. If you're not doing that, you're not loving him. If you're not keeping God's commandments, you do not love God. Good. Go back to Revelation. I want to end it right there and we're going to go right to the next part. Come on. Because at the end of the day, my whole point is to get you to recognize what tribe you're from. What nation? What tribe you from, brother? And what's your, and what's your nationality? No, what's your nationality? What did God call you? There you go. What's your, what's your nationality, Brother Reggie? That's right. That's See, right. Oh, from son of God to Israelite. You know, what's, you know what's crazy? What does Israel mean? What does Israel mean? Uh-oh. Oh! I got I to gotta get there, bro. I'm sorry, bro. I, I'm, I'm over here hopping around, but it's important. I'd rather you know who you are than you know what's going to happen to them. Because they're going to get their punishment. You think God ain't going to fight with his children? Okay, cool. God going to get, they're they going to get their punishment. But I want to make sure you don't get punished for not knowing. Give me one today. Give me what Israel means. I want, I want Brother Reggie to make sure you hear this. Read Genesis chapter 32, verse 28. Bring it he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob. Because Jacob, our forefather, was fighting with an angel, right? Y'all remember that in Genesis? He was fighting with an angel. And then what happened? Did he win? He won. He won against the angel. What did the angel do? He said, I'm going to change your name. And God allowed. What did Jacob have his name changed to? Mind you, Jacob is our forefather. That's the forefather of the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. That's your forefather. Your family's in the Bible. Read you. What did he change his name to? And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. He said, your name shall be called Israel. Why? For as a prince had thy power with God. Psalms 82. Right. He says, for as a prince have you power with God. You are prince of God. That's prince right. of God. Woo. Israel means prince of God. Son right. of God. That's oh. right. So when you call yourself an Israelite, you call yourself a child of God. That's your nationality. That's why they change it in slavery. They change your nationality from son of God to Negro. Right. Black, which means void of light. Right. That's what they change your nationality and your ways to. And when they changed our names and nationality, they changed our names from what? From uh, from Ephraim to Puerto Ricans, from Simeon to Dominicans. From Reuben to Seminole Indians, Gad to Native American Indians, all these names that God gave us, they took away and changed it. Why? So that way you no longer call yourself a child of God anymore. Right. That's why the confusion is. Alright, read that. Psalm 82. Psalm chapter 82, verse 6. Uh -huh. I have said, ye are God. What did God say to his children? Ye are God. So what's wrong with us today? Read. And all of you are children of the Most High. Uh huh. But what else? But ye shall die like men. What's happening to us on the streets right now? Do you see guys on the street? No. Since do you see guys on the street? No. It says we're dying like men, like these regular people. You know what that shows? There's no equality. You're not supposed to die like them. He says, you're my child, you're God's, but you gotta die like men. Why? Why are you dying like men? What's the wages of sin? Yeah. Huh, sis? What's the wages of sin? Yeah. You know what it is. Exactly. That's why we're dying like men. Because we are sinning. Our sin is causing us to lose our life. So, as Israelites, what are we supposed to be doing? Keeping, keeping just the commandments? Keeping all of them. The, 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 let me show you something. Give me James. 122? Yep, no difference. I the one that says no difference. I think that's two, or is it two? Or it's like, there's no difference between it. You say, that, he should say, thou should not kill. And he said, thou should not commit adultery. Romans 13. That's, that's, it's James, then James. I was confused, right? Yeah. God said, thou should not kill, but when the time ends, he said, we should slay all the people who bring that to you, right? There's a difference, let me show you. There's a difference between, for instance, if God gave you a commandment, if he made the rules, let's say, you, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make a carnal example. Let's say you make up your own game, right? 
Y'all make up your own game. You have control over the rules, correct? You're the only one who can change the rules, correct? That's the same way the Most High is. There's a righteous judgment for certain things, and then there's a wrong way from doing things. That's why he said, what good works shall I do? Because there's good works in taking uh, in, in the Most High punishing those who do wicked. There's a good works in that. Hey, check out that flyer. All right, brother? All right, brother. Oh, you got a question? Hmm. There are books missing about you said all the commandments in the all the commandments in King James. Where does the scripture say it's, it's enough it's sufficient enough? Revelation. 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 Two. Revelation two. Give me that. One. You know? Five. Twenty-five, twenty-six. Twenty-five, twenty. We're gonna show you. Because you got actually you asked a question. There's nothing wrong with that. Are all the commandments only in this Bible? Because it's missing books. Are just these enough for us to make it? It is. Absolutely is. Because at the end of the day, those nations destroyed our books. All our, they destroyed, we had 240. They destroyed our books. A lot of books. We only got 80 left, right? 25. Oh, 25, 225. We only got a certain amount left right now. With those books, though, it can stop all the crime that's happening in our neighborhoods. Right. It can stop all the diseases that's happening in our neighborhoods. With that, with just these laws alone, it can actually put you back on planet, uh, ruling this planet. Right. Read that. Revelation chapter 2, verse 25. Uh-huh. But that, but that which ye have already, hold fast. But what? Hold fast. But, read from the top. But that which ye have already. We have this already. Read. Hold fast. Read. Till I come. Till he when? Till I come. This is enough until he comes. Because he's going to make sure that you understand. This, 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 all of this simply enough right here, this is enough to beat all of this. Let me ask you a question. Do you, do you, uh, you, can you grow a beard? Did you know that you can't shave your beard as a man? According to the scriptures. It's okay. I'm just, these are certain things. Like I said, I'm not trying to make you feel any type of way. And since this is for you to take to your, your uh, to your soon-to-be husband that you need to be marrying, this is for all of us to apply in our lives. And we as a men, we're not supposed to shave our beards. This is the process of the change. Because who don't have a beard in life? Who don't? Name two types of things that don't have beards as a human. No, no, no. Do you have a beard? So a woman? What else does have a beard? A what? A child. So when they made you shave off your beard and shave off your head, what were they trying to call y'all? Either a woman or a child. That's why we don't have any men in our neighborhood. That's right. Give me Leviticus. I'm going to show you, bro. Hold on. If you can't grow nothing, bro. Yeah, first things first. Have you tried? I'm 30. Hey, well that little bit right there, bro, don't cut it. Yeah, I ain't cutting. No idea. <laughs> Heck yeah, I feel you, bro. Look, I got patches too, man. We all, hey, some of us, bro, some of us ain't got the connect yet. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm praying and fasting for you, bro. But at the end of the day, hold fast to what you got. Right. Read that. Leviticus chapter 21, verse 5. Uh huh. They shall not make baldness upon their heads. Not supposed to be bald. If you're going bald naturally, we're going to touch that. Read. Neither shall they shave off the corners of thy beard. Neither shall they shave off their beards. We're not supposed to shave. That's why when you see the commercials, right, for people shaving, who do you see in the commercial most of the time? You see white folks. Why? Because that's they hairy behinds that need to shave. This one don't belong to them. A lion don't cut off his mane. So why are you as a man cutting off your beard? Hey, give me yeah, Exodus. Give me Exodus. Leviticus chapter 13, verse 40. And the man whose hair is falling off his head, meaning if it's naturally bald, you don't grow hair there, read. Really? He is bald, uh -huh. yet is he clean. If it's naturally, you can't grow hair naturally, you hear that, brother? If you naturally can't grow hair, it's okay. But if you grow hair, don't cut it off. Do not cut your beard. You can trim it, you can trim it. Look nice, trim it, but do not cut it off. Do not bald yourself, do not cut your beard. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth.
So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.